nice to see you know your your character's always so well she doesn't change but she's so prim and proper and done up yeah every scene in every setting so it's you know it's only fitting yeah it's but. nice it's, it's satisfying to watch someone like that spin out of control and put on some sweats <laughs> and let loose a little bit yeah well you've got quite an array of work so this one character doesn't capture that but i'm sure you get plenty of times where you get to unwind on on screen oh yeah i've been very lucky i've been offered a, a you know a, over the course of many years a, a kind of a breadth of characters that i've been uh, um asked to play that's not often the case so yeah i i do consider this type of upper crusty you know um lady uh, persnickety fancy lady to be a specialty that i enjoy playing a lot, but I've I've been asked to do a lot of things on the the other side of the uh, spectrum as well. So yeah. Well, it's very nice to speak with you. I, I just a joy to watch you do your work on the series. I love Hetty. She's one of those characters. At first, I was like, she's gonna can how much fun can she be? And she's consistently fun in yeah. uh, in her own way. Yeah, yeah. You kind of hate yourself for loving her, but she finds a way to kind of be kind of you know adorable in a sneaky kind of way I think it's her childishness you know all the ghosts are, are a little bit like children and you know some of her basest instincts are are very uh you know id like and uh and childish and um and and silly and hypocritical and and I think you know her being so bald with with some of her hypocrisies is 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 enjoyable to watch especially in someone who is you know so interested in power and so uptight and concerned with appearances you know most of the times exactly so what was the original pitch do you remember that they gave you for heading the original pitch i mean i'm a journeyman you know character actor the original pitch is you know can you show up on friday for this audition <laughs> i mean i read the script and i thought oh my gosh this would be a dream come true uh, and it, you know, I instantly understood the the kind of music of how the uh, Joe Port and Joe Wiseman had had written this character, and I felt like it would be not only a lot of fun to play, but um, would play into a lot of my strengths as a physical actor and uh, et cetera. And, and yeah, I was lucky enough to to get the job, and lucky enough that you know it found a, a home that seems to have some life moving forward. Yeah, got me. It's got people love it it's you know it's it's very popular obviously but online if you anytime i post anything about ghosts i automatically have people responding with like how much they love this and and, and how it, you know guessing well there were some big moments this season guessing yeah. where this this storyline is going and guessing you know the big cliffhanger at the end how yeah. that's going to take off so there's passion which is uh, always wonderful to have that's very gratifying that that people feel so invested in us and and what's going to happen with us and with the various relationships on on the show and yeah I'm I we're all very proud of it it manages to be a silly light romp of a comedy and also you know have lots of uh, more heartfelt moments and and little prompts to you know people have told us how much more interested in american history they've become watching the show i mean that's a pretty great thing for a sitcom to be able to elicit uh or just you know different conversations it manages to be a family show and um you know kind of something for everybody we're we're um we love doing it and so it's i we hope it lasts for a good many more years and and how do you so cleverly written as you mentioned she's delightful at times but completely out of touch and doesn't fit in this era but yet you would find a way to still make her likable because she's you know she doesn't know it yet and she's learning but what is it like getting those scripts and discovering more about her with each episode well they've given her a, a very generous journey I mean she she's had she gets so many wonderful lines and she, because she, she speaks so quickly. <laughs> um, and I, I have a very musical way of approaching dialogue that I, I get all these very long unwieldy monologues, these little arias where she changes her mind in the middle of a sentence and is discovering things live in the moment. And, and um, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that they, that they've seen that I, you know, that that speaks to a certain skill set that I have and it's very fun to do. And so, yeah, they've been very generous with her. And I think they like writing for her very much. And um, it's always, there's so many, we have so much fun with all these big group scenes. It, it's seldom, it, it's very rare that you get a show, certainly a show on network television that uh, has 10 major cast members. That feels very 
luxurious to have that many people in in a space or in a shot at one time. Uh, but then so many of the more exciting things we get to do are when you break these characters off into all these unlikely pairings, like Hetty and, and Flower, or Hetty and Alberta, or Hetty and Trevor, or all, all every one of these, you know, there's so many possibilities for story and for surprise and conflict um, with, with all these different pairings. So, yeah. yeah. And, and none of them feel like side characters. They all feel it like, truly is like it's it's a chorus. Yeah. With, with, you take out one and something would be missing, which uh, we'll get to. But the uh, there's you know, that's what I love about it. No matter who's on screen, you're excited to see it. And, and the pairings, it's like pairing wine with food. You know, it's like, well, when you bring Trevor and Hetty together, it's a completely different feel than, say, Hetty and Samantha or, or any, anyone else. Yes. Um, I love your music and food metaphors. <laughs> I, I live through the metaphor. Um, <laughs> so this season, Hetty's repressed sexuality comes about, and you know we're talking stable boys, lumberjacks, Trevor, washing machines, which is probably the best running gag or one of the best running gags in the series, I think. Yeah. What was it like, or well, did you know that you would be exploring this part of Hetty, and, and what did you think? What do you think it brings to the character as we do? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I, I mean. I, it's so wonderful to have, you know, hypocrisies laid bare, right? It's so wonderful to watch someone act, you know, do a 180 and and discover, you know, who they really are. It's wonderful to watch someone who's so uptight, you know, just to kind of grab that thread and, and start pulling and see how much she's capable of unraveling. I mean, that's very satisfying to watch as an audience member. I find those kind of things satisfying. And so it's very satisfying to play. There's lots of comedy that, you know, comes out of that just that form in and of itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the both uh, Asher Grobman, who plays um, uh, uh, Trevor, and myself, we both separately pitched to the showrunners the first season very early on that, you know, if you're ever, if you ever just let me put this, this, you know, this bee in your bonnet, this, you know, this bug in your ear, if like, what if Hetty and Trevor got it, got it into some sort of illicit sexual, you know, power play, they both love money, they both, Hetty's, you know, treats him horribly since the first season, she bats him around all the time. Um, so there's a lot of uh, contentiousness between, you know, and heat between those two characters. So we pitched very early that they should hook up. And then lo and behold, they eventually did it. So we were not surprised. Um, uh, and and yeah, I mean, her journey of of sexual awakening and female empowerment and all those things is, um, I've spoken about this before, but, but very clearly prompted only uh, by the relationships that she has with the other ghosts in, in the house, relationships and points of view that she would have never had or experienced in her own life all of a sudden become possible, uh, you know, for her uh, because she's, you know, exposed to these other points of view and exposed to Samantha, our beautiful, amazing um, Rose McIver, who we all love, who is our fearless leader. And honestly, you know, I've been around the block, the best number one I've ever worked with on a show. She's just kind of built and designed to be a leader and is also so wonderfully talented, a, a comedic actress. I, I, we're very lucky to have her. And the show would be very different if she wasn't at the helm um, or leading the charge, as it were. So now I feel like I'm just kind of rambling, Stephen. Did I hit on any answers to any of your questions there? I, I'm loving everything you're saying. You know what? Uh, My questions are not the best. So I actually prefer the answers I get that it, it's about learning about what, you know, the world that you're creating and who you work with and how this magic happens, because it doesn't always happen. There's plenty of series you can go and t tune to that you know, 10 minutes in, you're like, I'm done. But Ghost, it's when that, when it, uh, you know, next episode option comes up, you just sit back and let it play. And, and I know full well how lucky we are. Um, because again, been around the block and like it, it, for so many, very, very, very many things need to go right mm -hmm. for a show to be a hit, for a show to be great, for people to enjoy a show and for them to enjoy it in, in, in the numbers that they're enjoying ghosts. You know, so many things need to go right. And it's, um, it's not a coincidence that we all love one another and, and, and get along so well off camera and have such respect for our showrunners and for all of our wonderful writers and all the creatives that are, you know, behind the camera and on, on this show. Uh, it, it all 
is part and parcel of what of why it works. You know, you can't I can't fake I mean, all the we're us, us so close together, working so close together, being on top of each other for thousands of years. You you can't fake that kind of chemistry, and and I think it's very obvious in in the product that we also genuinely love each other and, and make each other laugh. You know, who would have thought a Viking, a socialite, a hippie. Uh, a pantless Wall Street type, and uh, it, all this, these groups would come together and and make something so so much fun. It's like it it just doesn't seem possible, and the way they they craft it and and give them all, but also on, on top of being funny, add this extra layer of meaning, and and it yeah. touches upon so many different aspects of of today's world without it being preachy or or feeling too heavy. Yeah, well yes. said. I mean, well, who would have thought of it is the people that created the BBC version who are some of our executive producers on our show, the Horrible Histories Gang. Um, I don't know if you've seen the original British version, uh, but you yet. should, and I would encourage your audience to watch it as well. It, it uh, goes... Um, on CBS was was kind of taken from an original BBC property that's that's similar in structure and premise, but but very kind of different in temperament and tone. But um, you should watch that if you love our show and had such generous things to say about who would have thought that this would work and be both funny and also heartfelt and teachable and all these other things. Take a, a look at that show because it's similarly magnificent and um, yeah. I want to. I want to try to cram in more TV into my life. It's kind of impossible, oh, yeah. but I do. I I think it just ended though, so that way at least you know you, you know, only have so far to go. Yes, they did. They do very short seasons. I think there's only six episodes, but they just finished their fifth season, and one of their uh, actors came to play with us on our show this 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 season. Oh, really? Yeah, Matt Bainton, who is one of their writers and original creators, uh, who plays Thomas oh, the Pilot in the version, uh, came on and, and played Richie. I can't remember the name of the episode, um, but played the actor. The, oh, Terrible Deaths, Horrible Deaths. No, it's a better title than that. I'm not a writer. <laughs> um, I can't remember. But anyway, so he, play, he was an, a British actor, a very fancy British actor that came on to play Pete Martino, Richie Moriarty's uh, Dumb Deaths. Oh, we just got a little message here. Dumb Deaths, <laughs> the alliteration, so good. Um, anyway, he was wonderful. We hope that they all come on and play with us. And so the fact that we've been embraced by so many of the fans of that original show, because, you know, it that's really hard taking a successful, you know, property from, you know, British television that's genuinely funny and, and trying to make it work for an American audience and also not dumbing it down and having it still be smart and, and relevant here. And um, so we're, we're super proud. We were nervous that, you know, how the original fans would respond to our show, but I think, you know, they've been very generous and yeah. One of the best parts about the series is it's how risque it is yet. It's still somehow as a PG rating and there's, you know, can be enjoyed by, you know, by the family at the same time, there's like, some of the, in the in the nicest way possible, some of the most like like I said most risque naughty jokes out there. It's consistently, you know, yeah. got this edge to it. Yeah, and this old lady gets to say a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've asked, you know, how are we? Can I really say that? And you know, the answer is. Well, yeah, because it's a double entendre that your character doesn't necessarily understand. So, yeah. Uh, Wait, yeah, wait we, what, what old lady? I don't see one. There's no old lady. Oh, that's sweet. Thanks. Yeah. But you, you, the way you do play it is like, yeah, she's so clueless of what the real, of what it means that, you know, the things, the words that are coming out of our mouth, what they mean, that yeah. I guess you can get away with it. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, in my mind, at least, that's so many of the things that are, Truly really funny, or 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 or, or when uh, when you allow the when the audience is two steps ahead of the of, of the character, where there's mm -hmm. some amount of blindness that the character is exper experiencing. A and uh, anyway, I, I I find that very delightful to play. And Hetty Hetty gets into a lot of that kind of situation. And her connection with the murder of uh, Alberta's murder is uh, comes to like fruition. Now we we figure out what all the connection is, what the, you know, how it all works out. What do you think the implications will be for her moving forward with? Well, TBD. I mean, we've, there, we went through ghost court and there was a bit of a resolution, but I don't think that that conflict is, has played itself out fully. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, 
there, there are other conflicts that will be revealed based on this lie that H Hetty's been holding on to for all, all, all this time, based on her relationship with Isaac and, and so many of the conversations that they've had about his, his coming out story and all these other things. I mean, it, it's, um, it's, it's the best kind of wrinkle. I mean, it's one that can provide a whole lot more story. So, um, yeah, it was notable to me that Hetty was truly um, sorry and contrite and ashamed um, and regretful because that's not a color that we've seen a whole lot of from her. Um, so yeah, and it was challenging for me as an actor because um, I didn't know that that, none of us knew that that's how the story was gonna turn until you know a couple of days before we filmed it. And so the reverse engineering that goes into making sure that are finding a way to at least try to make all the choices that you as an actor make up until that point still jive with this new information, you know, it's a fun challenge. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's it, what makes it difficult to talk about is that there are so many reveals and things coming up for next season and these relationships. Yeah. And of course you can't tell me what's happening. I, I wanna know, but you can't tell me what's happening in season three, but you know, which is good. It's good to be interested in where these relationships go. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. Thank you for watching. Thank you for wanting to talk to me about this. I think our whole show is deserving of, of um, accolades, if I, if I may be so bold. I'm, I'm very proud to be a member of this company. Do you have a favorite character that you're pairing, like who you get to work off of? Well, I love I, Brandon Scott Jones and I are very close off screen as well. And um, I've loved all, all of that relationship between Hetty and Isaac. But I loved this pairing with Alberta and Hetty as well. I love Danielle Pinnock. I love Sheila Carrasco. And it seems like I'm Hetty's doomed to be her roommate for the foreseeable future. So that'll be a whole lot of fun. It, it's it, it sounds implausible. And I'm sick of hearing myself say it. But we really are all kind of in love. There's not a single person in this cast that I wouldn't want to spend the day with, that I wouldn't want to have more scenes with. There truly isn't. So, you know, yeah. Casting director, shout out. Uh, Tennis Valley and Liz Barnes did a great the job. Shows on the screen, which is the most important thing. Yeah. You know, that, the, that chemistry is, is quite obvious. Following the rules of Ghost. If you were yes. a ghost and you had to stay in one location forever, what location would you choose? Well, I mean, it's the property. The ghost rules are, it's not just the house, it's the property. So, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'd probably try to cheat the system because that's my way. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably try. So I don't know, maybe a really, I don't know, maybe a large ship because then I could go anywhere. Lots of different people, maybe a like large, large plot of land, a rolling branch somewhere. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I doubt I'd have much choice if it came to it. The question Those is, are some good ones. me a ghost? And I'm not sure. I think probably. Yeah, for a little bit. When, Would you? you know. No, not really. Yeah, you know, maybe for a little while. Who knows? It depends where you are. If, you know, as they mentioned, like going to like the city is would be hell. Yeah. So it would have to be in a good location, you know, being at a, at a bed and breakfast out in the middle of you know, this quaint little area is fine, but I definitely don't want to be a ghost. And not too soon, that, that's for sure. Okay, yes. Knock on wood uh, for us. Both. Yes. <laughs> yeah, kind of morbid question. Um, quick <laughs> wrap up real quickly with a couple questions. The cliffhanger, of course, someone got sucked off. I know you can't share anything about it, but what was your reaction or what was the cast reaction when you're reading that and like something big's going down? We were all shocked, and I will say no more. All right. That's, I mean, that's, that's what I'd expect. So, <laughs> all right. Then I'll wrap up with three, or one easy one. Three okay. words to describe Hetty. Aww. Um, contrary. Um, <laughs> difficult and adorable. I love it. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your work on the series. Really love it so much. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. I think we have a few months to wait. Well, who knows with this world that things are a little crazy right now. So yes. hopefully the- hoping, hoping the writers get an equitable deal is sooner yes. rather than later so we can all get back to work and see who gets sucked off. Exactly. <laughs> thank you so much. What a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very it's much. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. Have a great day. Yeah.